Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly, where it's going in the Chicago trial and the federal Brooklyn appeal. Um, something should be heading up about that appeal coming up within the next couple weeks, because this right here, we got to be very mindful and understand, you know, how the system works. And right when we're not looking is when something is going to, you know, become for Robert. So let me see here. I want to talk to you about August the 25th. What is going on? Day nine in trial. I want to let you hear this Chicago um, clip. And let me see. But it was about the recovering of the sex tape. So we've already been there. We've done that. That has been already communicated on our Kelly Appeal. Um, but before we get to the article, I'm going to just go into the article. So, <laughs> so how is everybody doing out there today? Um, I'm just getting in. So I'm trying to you know, calm my spirit, let things, you know, go over how it should. Um, so the former ex-girlfriend testifies, let's see here, about the underage goddaughter. So I guess Lisa Van Allen goes on and takes a stand at the federal trial today and testified that she has sexual contact with Kelly and his underage goddaughter at the behest of the singer who also filmed and directed their encounter. So, you know, Lisa Van Allen, she had done a great big introduction to Vlad TV. And it was so about, you know, how she didn't know she was, you know, um, in a relationship with Robert on a threesome and she had invited some of her other 17 year old friends to join in. But we're gonna let that, put put that on the back burner cause we already know about Lisa Van Allen and we're not gonna put that much energy or faith in her testimony because she understands how she manipulated that system. She really and truly wanted Robert to be hers. However, I'm not judging her nor Robert. So we're gonna let that deal with its own self when the jury makes its decision. So the defense key government witness tried to extort R. Kelly. This is from the AP News. I like this because they're in Chicago. They can give us the 411 immediately. So defense lawyers at R. Kelly's child pornography trial in Chicago sought to portray a key government witness as a liar and an extortionist, contending the man first approached the R&B star in 2001 and demanded that Kelly pay $1 million or he would go public with video that could put Kelly in serious legal peril. So this is the opposite of what we heard yesterday. So um, they said those assertions came during seven hours of often blistering cross-examination of Charles Freeman yesterday, a foreman a former merchandising agent for Kelly who testified Tuesday that it was Kelly who first approached him, eventually offering Freeman $1 million to recover a VHS tape featuring Kelly. So regardless who, who went to who first, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter because the, the connection is the tape. Your entire relationship with Kelly centered around stealing from him and lying to him. Lee Kelly attorney Jennifer Bonjean, raising her voice, told Freeman Wednesday. Minutes later, she added, you were part of a shakedown scheme, right? Freeman shot back, no. He said, I am not a thief. Federal prosecutors charged Kelly with production of child pornography based in part on that recording, which they say shows him sexually abusing a 14-year-old. He and co-defendant Daryl McDavid are also accused of sexually rigging R. Kelly's 2008 state child pornography trial by threatening witnesses and concealing video evidence. 
Freeman's testimony at this trial helps. Prosecutors claim that both Kelly and McDavid knew that the videos Kelly had lost track of in the early 2000s were incriminating and could lead to his conviction at the 2008 trial. McDavid's lawyer, Bew uh, Brindley, started the cross-examination by pacing, waving grand jury transcripts at Freeman and several times telling the 52-year-old to be quiet and listen to his questions as he sought to tear down Freeman's credibility. How many times have you told lies about videotapes connected to Robert Kelly? Brindley asked, using Kelly's full first name. It's multiple times, right? Freeman agreed it was. Freeman, who is testifying under an immunity agreement, also agreed when Brindley asked if it was difficult to trust a person who lies, who will cheat and steal to get money. Kelly, 55, was handed a 30-year prison sentence by a federal judge in New York in June for convictions on racketeering and sex trafficking charges. And if convicted in U.S. District Court in Chicago, he could see years added to that sentence. Brindley also accused Freeman of lying when he testified that he found the video Kelly was looking for in Atlanta in 2001. And when he said he didn't know it was con know its contents until he watched it later the same day, Brindley suggested Freeman never actually went to Atlanta and that he already possessed a potentially compromising video of Kelly using it to extort him. Kelly. That's how all this happened, isn't it, Brindley asked. Freeman said that wasn't true. Freeman said money wasn't his only motivation for agreeing to hunt down the video, insisting he also wanted to help his friend Kelly, whom he had known since around 1990. Freeman conceded that he kept copies of videos for nearly 20 years, not until a lawyer warned him in 2019 that, poli that police were poised to arrest Freeman for possession of child pornography, did he finally turn them over to law enforcement, he testified. After Freeman smiled as, as Brentley questioned him about holding on to child pornography for so long, Brentley asked, is this funny? Are you having a good time? Freeman responded, yes, I am. Mm. You weren't upset with what you've done, Brentley asked. I'm not, Freeman answered. After acquitting Kelly in 2008, some jurors told reporters they had no choice because the girl who then was in her 20s did not take the stand to confirm it was her in the video. That was at the heart of the state's case. Last week, she testified at the federal trial in Chicago saying she was the child in the video and Kelly was the adult man. So I just wanted to share that article with you and it is trending as far as the AP news, uh, for those who chose not to, you know, want to hear what CBS had to say, trust and know that these transcripts that I'm reading, all of this is making sense and aligning with what CBS and AP news and all the other um, people who are reporting, accredited reporting, are saying in the trial. So... I also wanted to let you hear one more thing. I tied something together and it's amazing how I wish Robert knew about this when he was going through all of the things of people stealing his money and nobody really getting any benefit, but the people who were taking from him. So Brad Pitt, as of, August the 18th, 2022, has a foundation that agrees upon $20.5 million to settle for owners of defective New Orleans homes. That's what Robert should have done. He should have invested his money into nonprofit work because he wouldn't be going through the stress that he's going through right now. So let's look at the example that Brad Pitt did. That's why I say stay aware of what is going on in the world today. So then that way you'll see what's happening as things maneuver and go through. So actor Brad Pitt has reportedly agreed to a settlement of $20.5 for the owners of homes built by his 
Make It Right Foundation Housing Charity, which suffered from water leaks, black mold, and foundation issues. A settlement was reached earlier this week that will see $20.5 million paid to the homeowners who bought legal action after numerous defects to their homes were found. So the money for the settlement will be provided by Global Green, not Brad Pitt. Brad put Brad Pitt put his money into investment. Okay? So even though he won't see it, just like R. Kelly is not going to see all of his royalty, he is now investing it. So it's going to return to him in smaller portions not just the billions that is owed to him based on Hollywood. They don't have that type of money to pay Brad Pitt for what he has already done in Hollywood already. So Global Green is a California-based nonprofit that was not named in the lawsuit. So they just went to a, a whole nother nonprofit that was not named in the lawsuit, but has links to the Hollywood actor. So they are connected. Maybe he's the board of director, sits on the board. He does something with this organization. Pitt is listed as one of the nonprofit's advocates, see, on its website. So he says, I am incredibly grateful for Global Green's willingness to step up and provide this important support for the lower ninth families, Pitt said in a statement. We collaborated in the early days post-Katrina, and we are very fortunate to have Global Green's generous, continuing commitment to help address the challenges around these homes and others in need. So they are helping the low to moderate income individuals, no matter where you are. But in a destitute area such as, you know, around Katrina and where all of that happened, the hurricane took place. They're actually rebuilding. So there's investment grants that are available to big corporations that match dollar for dollar the amount of funds that will help imp empower them. And yet nothing is coming out of his pocket, but it looks as though he is getting paid during doing something good in the community. And that's how Robert should have funneled his money as well. He needed a better business consultant. He really did. Katrina and we were fortunate to have Global Green's generous, continuing commitment to help address the challenges around these homes and others in need. Hopefully this agreement will allow everyone to look ahead to other opportunities to continue to strengthen this proud community in the future. Attorney Ron Austin, who began legal proceedings against the nonprofit in 2018, explained that all the money would fund repairs to the homes. You're talking about a group of people who didn't have an option to move and buy or rent a second home, he told the Guardian newspaper. This was their life savings and they were living in something that was deteriorating quickly around them. So they're relieved and grateful. The Make It Right Foundation was established by Pitt. And don't forget, Robert was getting ready to do the same thing. Right before he got into this situation, he was getting ready to put together all the rappers and basketball players and baseball players and bringing them together to create an opportunity for youth to be able to go through a school that would empower them to do music work. He was there. He was already doing it. So I guess he just didn't have it directly at the same second that Brad Pitt did. So I'm bringing this together to let you know what's going on, number one, in Katrina and what's going on in news today, um, even though this is a couple days, about a week late. <laughs> but New Orleans is part of our, our tradition, you know? Um, and it's a great thing that Brad Pitt took the ability to do something for those individuals who put so much of their hard earned savings into the ability to be homeowners. So I wanted to share that with you today. I'm so exhausted, but I'm going to finish this up today 
And then I'm going to do a um, little quick, you know, tell you what's going on and a live in a minute just to get people to start coming through. So my journal entry for August the 25th, 2022, check your heart and keep it moving. Dear Robert, I hear a song in my heart for you titled Speak Now or Forever Hold Your Peace. Yes, it is powerful as you say silence can seem so loud. Your reports are coming along from IRS reports to merchandising and related situations with clothes, shoes, cars, everything you've purchased. All these areas were done for you. That's why in business, these areas were done. That's why in business, I always teach my clients to be step-by-step step engaged with acts done on behalf of your company. You know, I have partners from as far as Africa to Beverly Hills, California, and I make sure that I report day-to-day -day activities to them. You should have known everything going on in your business. And if you did, great. It was what it is. It is what it is. I am listening to how everything is going down, but I am also going to tell you that my goals are to number one, hear you speak on your own behalf, or two, to hear what your jury has to say about what they believe. Yes, it is amazing that we have to hear the 2008 trial all over again. Lisa Van Allen, I paid, I gave her no energy today. I don't even have it to give, Robert. That's okay as well. Trials are about taking the information and fine tooth combing it to get to the reality of the truth. Not too sure if prosecution is trying to get to the truth or if they're just trying to win by any means necessary, but that's neither here nor there. My grandmother always said, that's, that don't have anything to do with the price of the tea in China. So she basically meant that had nothing to do with it. You're going to pay it or you're not going to drink it. <laughs> One or the other. These journals give me a peace of mind, Robert. It helps me to see clearly as I write these entries to you. It further helps me see what I am to, what, what I'm thinking about in the corners and the cracks and crevices of my own energy. So my spirit is saying to you to remain strong and to keep the faith. You're going to come out of the wilderness. You know, you're going to come out of the wilderness and the test is just there to teach. That's it. Creator is making clear your path of deceivers who you thought were your friends and family. So I'm here to tell you that the spiritual energy of today says, check our hearts and keep it moving. Keep it moving. So for Kelly Nation, I want to say to you today that it's powerful. It's a powerful day. You know, it's a blessed day. Um, There was a time that a brother, a group of brothers, it was like four or five brothers, they literally turned against their one brother, basically said that the brother had died, told their father, don't look for him anymore, he's dead. And even in the midst of all hell and chaos in that in incarcerated state, he was able to continue to find out what motivated him. And wherever he was at, that's where the most motivation showed up. So if he was in the prime minister's office with the lords, the gods, the, you know, you know, all the eloquent people, he was able to speak that language. But if he was in prison, he was able to speak that language. And that's why we cannot allow the ego to tell us things about who we are when humility should be the first and foremost thing. And I'm not talking about humility that other people expects based upon what they see. Oh, you haven't admitted to, you know, your apologies for anything you feel you haven't done wrong. So you're not humble. 
That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the humility that comes from knowing the truth, not living within guilt, but living in the moment of peace that surpasses anybody's understanding. Because to me, when I see, which I can't take, you know, get pictures from what's going on in Chicago, but from what I hear, he is at a balanced fulcrum. He's okay. And that's all I need to hear. And I do have someone in the courtroom that's giving me this information, that's sharing to me what needs to be shared, and then uh, providing me with the transcripts that I refuse. <laughs> I cannot do all that extra. So I'm not even really uh, using those transcripts. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to sum it up, see what's going on, and give you a presentation of it. So uh, my battery's going. Hold on. So what I want you guys to do today for me is to share in the chat box what your feelings are. Hold on. What your feelings are relating to how you're, how you're doing is the severity of Robert's situation from what you're hearing coming out of the trial. Is it giving you a sense of security or is it making you feel that you have something to worry about? Because me, myself, personally, I don't see anything different from 2008. Even the tape. <laughs> Even the tape. That's about the only thing. And, and uh, you know, his IRS records are, you know, coming up correct. Uh, you know, the people that's sitting there, you know, having things to say about him are being held up in contempt, even under their immunity. <laughs> so it's not really anything new. It's, it's, it's nothing. I think it's a waste of his time. I think it's a waste of our time, but I think it is Hollywood. I think Hollywood is creating this situation so we can stay informed, so we can just be here. You know, everything is about money. Hmm. So that's what I wanted to give today. So I'm going to give 10 minutes for the chat to run. Feel free to write any of your thoughts down that you feel really not too much to report other than the whole, you know, Lisa Van Allen situation that we already realizes, you know, and, and there is a, if you are concerned about making sure you're up to date with day nine and all that's going to be said today because the only thing that's going to be said that's different than 2008 is the fact that you know did mr freeman go and demand that she give over the tape that's what i want to hear i want to hear her say yes i gave the original tape to him so if she gave the original tape to him from what she had with the jane or susan or whoever is in this tape, then I want to know if that is the tape that was shown to the jury. Because if that is the tape, then technically she should be in it. So that would mean that there's another tape that has not been presented with the 14-year-old and Robert Sylvester Kelly. So that's a whole nother situation. We will find out um, when the transcripts make it, when I go and read them up, I will let you know tomorrow about that. However, I really and truly believe that the only video was the video that Mr. Freeman had that he made copies of, and it's still a copied video, should still have timestamp, date, and all of that on it. And so I, I just, I feel some kind of way I'm not buying into the hype. I'm not really doing it because it's not worth my energy. It's not worth my peace of mind and it's not worth my health. You know, it is what it is. So 
Thank you so much for being here, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. And I will keep it very, very short. God bless you all. I do have to read. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I have to read the statements that was part of yesterday's chat. And I mean, it it was very interesting. So yesterday, Small Fry asked, the question is how old was Jane? Number two, the tape he was trying to get back was with his wife on it. So free Kells. Thank you, Small Fry. So what are your thoughts about that? Was it the fact that Andrea Kelly was on that tape? Is that what was going on? Why he wanted to pay so much for the tape? I think I remember hearing that back in 2000, somewhere around there. And it was Andrea or the wife. That's how the wife showed up. And we started realizing that he was married or something. I do kind of remember that small fry, just a very vague moment of it. A. Howard says, the way I understand it is that Freeman dealt with McDavid and Brown as far as the tape that incriminates them, and they have to prove that they were working on behalf of Robert. McDavid was the one that was getting extorted for money. Hmm. So then basically David had his own enterprise from what I heard, you know, because as far as him getting into the, into the jacuzzi stripping and having, you know, making sure he doesn't have a wire on him and that he's not tapped and that he, you know, uh, wasn't being followed and different things like that. I mean, all this stuff is really getting me to believe that McDavid had his own business going while Kelly was in the studio. So we'll soon figure it out. Uh, Mr. Hawes, without immunity, Freeman would not provide the testimony and assist the prosecution. His testimony is very critical as it relates to possession of child pornography by R. Kelly because he had firsthand information. Yes, that's true, but however, he also carried child pornography for over 20 years. Over 20 years. He should be responsible for what it was that the part that he played in it as well. TF, the biggest question is whether or not the tape has a date on it. Absolutely. It better be time stamped. That's the only way I'm going to feel any type of way about it. The Backstreet Boys video does not determine the year. That could have been just a replay of the music video. Absolutely. VH1 always played outdated videos. Now, if there is no date on the tape, then we have a qu to ask the question, why? Because it was a copy of a tape that was purposely there to take out that timestamp. Because you can record, and I don't believe, you can tell the original tape to remove the timestamp. I do believe you could do that because I used to do VHSs all the time. Now, if there is no data on the tape, then we have to ask the question as to why. I do not believe that Bon Jean would have taken this case if she personally felt that she could not win. There is more to this and has been heard in court. Amen. I give you a love on that one, Miss TF Collect. Mr. Mrs. I don't know. Mr. Yeah. Jermaine. All I heard was child porn being sold for a million dollars and seller of child porn to get an immunity deal. Took 20 years to turn it over. This sounds beyond unreal. Jermaine, you are so correct. <laughs> That's why I'm not, I'm not putting my energy into this. So I give you a heart. Fancy, fancy face. Morning, R. Kelly Appeal TV. I apologize for missing you yesterday. Mr. Freeman needs to be held accountable for his actions as well. No one needs to get off doing wrong. Um, no one needs to get off doing wrong except Robert Sylvester Kelly. I'm not here to judge Kelly, but I really wish these people would get off his back. This case shouldn't even be brought up years ago. It was over. How can they do this? Those women need a life, period. It just don't make no darn sense. 
They getting away with these lies on this man. I pray to God that Jennifer Bonjean win this case for him. And I pray that Robert Sylvester Kelly learns a valuable lesson from this garbage. Bless this case, Lord, which I know you already have. Amen. I'm giving you a heart. I like that one. Cindy Warren. God bless Robert. God bless his lawyer with God working through her. I feel that everybody that sits there and lies on him needs to be locked up if they if I'm hoping that it's not him, I pray to God, it's not him on those tapes. Me too, Cindy. I feel that everybody is paying all of them to lie on him. It just don't make no sense. The story just don't make no sense. It don't add up to me. Robert is a good man. He did a lot of good for people that he trusted went against him. Comment is, oh, karma is a B. and. You know what else? I have faith that his lawyer is going to win his case in the name of Jesus. Robert Sylvester Kelly, stay strong. Keep your head up high. When you go to court, God is with you and your lawyer and the devil is a liar. He is trying to restore that man, but he can't. Okay. The devil is a liar. He is trying to restore that man, but he can't. Robert is part of God. If it ain't no poop on them tapes, they need to set him free in the name of Jesus. I can't put a good man down. Oh, Jesus. It can't put a good man down and some of the proof they don't even have. So why they just railroad him just to keep him there without no proof. I want to say, Robert, I love you. I have faith and hope and I pray and I believe in you. Now I ain't got no money. They want to sit there and lie on him. For what money cannot overrule power of the name of Jesus. I just want to say, Robert, you keep your faith and keep believing God because you're not by yourself. Bless the judge and everyone in that courtroom and the jury. Bless them with an open mind and aware of thinking. He's going to always be in my prayers, him and his lawyer with God on their side. If that is on him, on them, if that is him on the tapes, not trying to be negative, then he have to pray, pay the price, but I'm hoping that it's not him. I love Robert too much, and I have hope in the name of Jesus. I pray to God that the goodness comes out of this with faith and joy in the name of Jesus, that he can walk out there free. Uh, they're a free man with peace and mind to enjoy his heart. Amen. Oh my God. Oh my God. Cindy. You are such a blessing and we love you and we thank you for that wonderful prayer. Small fry, I stand with Robert Kelly. No minors, watch. Linda, that is not Robert on that tape. That is Adeline Prado and Damon Pryor. He was trying to buy the tape back because Andrea was on the tape. Okay, we're going to find out. A. Howard, if he perjures himself, that immunity goes out the window. Absolutely. And I read this yesterday and I had to really tell you that I definitely do believe that. And, you know, <laughs> he's already been told by Bon Jean, you're a liar and an extortionist. So I agree with you. Claudette is just praying. She ain't saying nothing. She's just putting her hands up in prayer. Ray Johnson, extortion is a crime. So yes, he should be arrested. Absolutely, Mr. Freeman, you should go down. And Lisa Van Allen, I really don't even want to hear your story again. I don't because you had a lot of things going on in your world and you just wanted to be grown. At the time, you were already 17. You don't even have nothing really to, to say in this because if if you could lie to your own godmother and lie about your godmother, then me, myself, personally, I feel you could definitely lie about to Rob about what went on and what happened with Robert, but we don't know. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging Rob. I'm just going to sit back, wait, and see what's going on. So thank you all very much for being here, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. You are a blessing. Kelly Nation, stay strong. And, you know, for those who choose to either be on either side, you know, some people were in the middle, some that fell off, you know, we don't see as many, you know, people free R. Kelly, free R. Kelly, because things are looking a certain way, but, you know, just be honest in your own heart, you know, do that inner check-in, you know, 
um, check with your heart and keep everything else moving. So as with, with all things, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time. You have 10 minutes if you haven't already spoken in the chat. God bless. See you tomorrow.